A man was caught carrying a mummy he claims is his girlfriend. An insect that flings pee with a butt catapult is the first known in nature. And a barista robot can make you 20 coffee drinks in South Korea. These are the weird stories for Wednesday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast recorded inside a closet. We're covering weird news from all around the world. The world is weird. I'm reporting the weirdness of the world for you, for your entertainment. Let's laugh. Let's learn. A man was found carrying around a mummy, calling it his spiritual girlfriend. Uh, There's more, though, to this mystery. Let's dive in to this strange story out of Peru. The police had quite a surprise when they searched a young man who was caught drunk with two of his friends at an archaeological site in western Peru. Oh, he's caught drunk at an archaeological site, and he has a mummy in a bag. Hmm. I wonder if we're dealing with a grave robber here. Inside his cooler bag, the authorities found an ancient mummy believed to be six to 800 years old in the fetal position inside a bag. This is uh, not exactly showing respect for the dead. Now, uh, we have Julio Cesar Bermejo, who is a 26-year-old. He was caught by the authorities. He claimed that this mummy that was in his bag is actually his spiritual girlfriend, which he said he had named her Juanita. Uh, He's quoted as saying, At home, she's in my room. She even sleeps with me. I take care of her. I love my Juanita, my spiritual girlfriend. I'm wondering if this guy's uh, lying, (laughs) because I don't think anybody in their right mind could sleep with this disgusting mummy. If you saw a photo of it, I mean, this thing's got to smell horribly. You can't take this into your bed with you. You just cannot. The authorities have examined the mummy. They concluded the remains are of a 4 foot 11 inches tall, 45 year old man who died between six and 800 years ago. It's not even a female mummy. It's not a Juanita. It's a Juan is what the Peru Ministry of Culture told the media. Now this guy Bermejo claimed he had been given the mummy by his father. Oh, it's passed down. The mummy's been passed down. The spiritual girlfriend that isn't even a girl. It had been in his family for over 30 years, he claims. It's not clear where his father would have acquired the mummy. Are they still, like, taking his word? He's at an archaeological site. I mean, he obviously got it from the site, right? I mean, it's just a coincidence he's caught at an archaeological site with a mummy in a bag. (laughs) Now, you're believing him that it's passed down by his father? Are you guys okay over there, authorities? Bermejo says he kept the mummy in his bedroom in a box next to his television. He added that he had taken the mummy to the archaeological site to show it off to his friends. He denied trying to sell the mummy. Ah, oh, that's what's going on. This is a mummy deal at, a, at an archaeological site. He got the mummy off Craigslist. He's trying to sell it at an archaeological site. He was probably like given a tour of the archaeological site and then saying, hey, if you enjoyed the tour, perhaps you would like a trinket from this archaeological site. An authentic 800-year-old mummy. I'm not sure if it's male or female, because that part has since worn away. (laughs) But, I mean, I bring it to bed with me normally. Now, in case you didn't know, mummification was very common in ancient Peru. Yes, it's um, one of those coincidences. Oh, there's mummification going on in Egypt and in South America. But, you know, if you talk to historians, oh, they had no communication, these cultures. They just coincidentally both came up with mummification. Okay. The body was mummified and found in a fetal position, which is a common burial practice at the time. Mummies were often placed in graves above the ground that were easy to pillage. They were often ransacked, according to experts. I visited a pyramid in uh, Lima, Peru. There's one of them right in the city. And uh, they show you a grave with um, there's actual mummies inside, and they're in the fetal position at the bottom of it. It's um, It's... In the pyramid. No, you don't go in. You're just kind of walking on top of it, but you can peer down into the burial place. A fascinating place, by the way. I looked it up in case you happen to be traveling to Lima. It's called Huaca Puclana. It's an adobe and clay pyramid located in the Miraflores district in centralized Lima, Peru. The inhabitants of the area who built the pyramid lived 200 AD to 700 AD. It says here at the end of the article, several mummies have 
previously been found in Peru, which is home to hundreds of archaeological sites of several civilizations that developed before and after the Inca Empire. In 2021, a mummy estimated to be between 800 and 1,200 years old was unearthed by archaeologists at a site near the country's capital city of Lima. I'm going to assume that that mummy is not anyone's uh, girlfriend. Uh, spiritual girlfriend, my bad. You don't need to have a mummy as a girlfriend these days. You can get yourself a, a robot or a, a, a doll. You, know, you don't have to sleep with some dusty old creature. You can, you know, get with it. Get with technology, guys. Oh, uh, not to mention that uh, having a mummy as a girlfriend is illegal and expensive. Researchers discovered an insect that flings pee with a butt catapult. It's the sound of science. Boop, 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 science. All right, let's learn about this insect that flings pee with its butt catapult. <laughs> Sounds amazing. Uh, I don't want to run into a whole batch of these insects. I'll be covered in their pee that was flung by their butt. Relatives of cicadas, known as sharpshooter insects, can catapult urine droplets at super fast speeds, revealing the first known example of, quote, super propulsion in nature, according to a new study. Well, I mean, I, I doubt this because I've been known to have some bouts of super propulsion after I have a, a certain amount of chili con carne. <laughs> so that'll get me going. Okay, so this newly discovered effect helps these bugs save energy during peeing and may inspire better self-cleaning devices and soft robotic engines, scientists noted. Give it up to the scientists to examine an insect that's catapulting pee and say, you know what, we could, we could turn this into some sort of robotic engine. In the new study, researchers examined relatives of cicadas known as, all right, you ready for this? These things sound cool. They're called glassy-winged sharpshooters. Uh, homo, homoladisca vitrepinus, vitrepinus. Wow, they have penis in the Latin for this. I think I butchered that name. These insects are about half an inch, 1.2 centimeters long. They feed on sap from the xylem, which is the woody part of a plant that brings water and dissolved nutrients up from the roots, as opposed to the phloem, which brings sugar down from the leaves. Okay, guys, we're learning... The sharpshooter's diet is 95% water and pure in nutrients, so the bugs constantly drink xylem sap in order to get enough to eat and pee up to 300 times their body weight per day. Imagine peeing 300 times your body weight. That's insane. For comparisons, humans pee about 1 40th of their body weight per day. Yeah, 300 times your body weight. You're just on the toilet all day. Oh, what a terrible existence for these poor glassy-winged sharpshooters. Although maybe they enjoy peeing all day. I don't know what that's like. Although much is known about the mechanics of eating, a great deal remains unknown about the physics of excretion, the researchers noted. They focused on sharpshooters to see if their small bodies evolved any clever innovations to contend with constantly peeing. Here's a quote from a biophysicist at the Georgia Institute of Technology in Atlanta. Ooh, let's hear what this nerd has to say. <laughs> well, I saw these insects peeing once, and I fell in love. <laughs> Oh, the things that get these biophysicists horny. It's really crazy. You fell in love when you saw them peeing. Hmm. So then what did the scientists do? Well, using high-speed videos and microscopy, they analyzed a structure at the sharpshooter's tail end, technically named the anal stylus, or as this nerd calls it, a butt flicker. Yeah, I got a butt flicker. When the bug is ready to pee, the butt flicker flexes downward to make room as the bug sneezes out a droplet of urine. When the drop reaches an optimal size, the stylus bends downward even more, and then, like the flippers of a pinball machine, launches the urine, accelerating more than 40 Gs, 10 times higher than the fastest sports cars. Wow! This is the fastest urine-flinging machine in nature. Researchers found that the stylus travels at up to... 0.75 feet per second. However, the catapulted urine droplets fly about 40% faster. The discovery reveals that an effect called super propulsion, previously seen only in artificial settings, is happening here. With super propulsion, an elastic projectile moves faster than its launch pad does because of an energy boost it receives from sinking its motions with that of its launch pad, like a diver timing their jump off a springboard. We got one more quote from this nerd. 
you know, what started as a curious observation of an unusual peeing mechanism uncovered the first example of super propulsion in a biological organism. Yay! Well, I tell you, nature is not only weirder than I supposed, it's actually weirder than I even can suppose. ¿Cómo te llamas? There's now a barista robot that can make 20 drinks and manage coffee shops. This story is out of South Korea. Tech hipsters, brace your digital souls because a robot barista could be whipping up your daily flat white at a silicone roundabout coffee shop sometime in the near future. An android that can make 20 different drinks to order, including custom coffees, has been launched in South Korea by the country's biggest phone network, SK Telecom. The AI barista robot uses a robotic arm powered by advanced artificial intelligence. It can even close your lid when serving beverages, according to its creators. This firm wants to be the leader in coffee-making robots in the next five years as it looks to make unmanned coffee cafes a reality. The company's partner on the new bot, fellow South Korean firm Doosan Robotics, already sells these robotic systems in Western Europe and North America. I've never heard of a robot coffee maker. The robot barista, I am the android barista. Tomo oregato, android barista, making you lattes all day. Uh, it says here, the barista robots can be equipped with surveillance cameras to help out with security. <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> Someone will just steal this robot in the U.S. and run out with it. <laughs> That's happening. And they'll turn it into a sex bot at home. Come here, sex bot. Bring me my cappuccino and sit on my lap. As its name implies, the new beverage robot relies on AI to complete tasks. Its computer brain can crunch mountains of data. Mountains of data? It only makes 20 drinks, bro. <laughs> Come on now. Um, anyways, it says it can crunch mountains of data, allowing it to help manage entire coffee store chains. Oh, so the baristas, it's like a manager as well. Doesn't just make the coffees. It's manager. It's security. It's everything. Does it clean the bathroom? Those bathrooms are out of control in the coffee shops. My goodness. Have you been to a Starbucks bathroom recently? I'm like, am I going to get out of here alive? I'm definitely getting a disease. This machine can purportedly monitor the coffee shop sales as well to help evaluate profits across multiple branches. It is said to identify popular menu items, raw material consumption, and equipment status in real time. The robot then compiles and sells all this info to store owners through a mobile app. It can supposedly do all of this analysis while at the same time crafting you a nice matcha latte. The article comments that waking up to a robot brewed coffee every morning doesn't actually sound that bad, especially if the robot cleans up afterwards. The idea of a robot barista that never messes up your order, doesn't idly chat to you during your morning commute, or try to flirt with you may also sound appealing, though the emergence of the machine will probably set off alarm bells for cafe workers. Yeah, you think? Our jobs are going away, guys. Pretty soon there's going to be a robot recording Weird AF News in a closet, putting me out of business. It says here that tech startups have also developed robotic arms to flip hamburgers at fast food joints. Automated pizza cooking stations have been created, along with sushi-making machines that can create nigiri and omosubi on demand. Well, I don't know what we're going to do for jobs, guys. We're just going to be, I don't know. Maybe stand-up comedy will still be a thing for me. And I can't see robots telling effective jokes anytime in the future. That's not, the robots are so far from funny. I think that part of my life is safe. I don't know, what do you think of this? Are you concerned? Any of you seeing androids or robots or automated arms, robotic arms entering into your industry? And does that concern you? Call the show, 646-450-2012. Also, would you order uh, a latte from a robot? Hello, my friends. Thanks for joining me for this Weird AF News episode, spending a little time with the podcast. I appreciate you and your loyal listenership. If you've just joined us, please make sure you subscribe to the show if you dig it. Um, heads up, it's five days a week, and not all of them are great. Um, I want to give some love to Stevie Emo on YouTube, who wrote me a nice comment on one of my videos. Yeah, the podcast goes up to YouTube every day as well, just FYI. Uh, Steve -o, uh, Stevie wrote, just found you and shared your hilariousness. You're awesome, dude. 
Stevie from Mustang, Oklahoma. That sounds awesome. Mustang, Oklahoma. Doesn't that sound like a cool place? I imagine Stevie over there is like a sheriff in Mustang, Oklahoma. Pretty cool. Thanks, Stevie. Appreciate the comment, bro. I got a, a bad review on Amazon. Let's read it. I got one star from Jeffrey Christensen. Oh, boy, he's uh, got a lot of time on his hands. He wrote two long paragraphs. Oh, boy. Why do the people that hate me write the longest? It's so strange. Uh, he wrote middle school production content. Okay, middle school. Got it. The host is a self-proclaimed comedian. Um, yeah, I mean, I self-proclaim, but if you want to go to my Instagram, there's you know plenty of proof of this. Uh, I pay the bills this way, so I'm a little bit more than a self-proclaimed comedian if I'm cashing checks now, Jeffrey, aren't I? But anyways, Jeffrey says, not sure if he has any real-world experience with paying customers. His jokes fall flat as they are usually just twists on pronunciations or, or a rhetorical question to a situation. While a few of the news stories he covers are interesting. A few? Okay. Uh, and will make you shake your head. Nothing will make you giggle or laugh out loud. If you're looking for something with an SNL or Bill Maher tact, this is an entirely different galaxy. Yeah, as if I ever claim to be in the SNL or Bill Maher category. Uh, it's more. He says it's more on par with a middle school production trying to report the school news and lunch specials over the morning intercom. Once in a great while, something will land, but there is no depth or character to the comedy style. The host attempts comedy using repetitious references, obvious situational jokes, and only refers to what is in the article he is reading. Oh, is that so? How many episodes did you listen to? I only refer to what's in the article? No, I actually share a lot of outside information, a lot of personal information such as the pyramid in Lima that I visited in today's episode. But I can't count on you to listen to that. You probably only listened to one episode and then wrote two paragraphs because you're a sociopath, Jeffrey Christensen. Um, lastly, he says, it feels like everything is done on the fly without any comedic prep work. Well, you know what, Jeffrey? You can always listen to the other daily weird news podcast that's out there. Oh, I don't think there is one. Oh, I don't think there is. <laughs> There's probably one done by, a, by an AI which probably has so much personality. That'll, that sounds enjoyable. Anyways, if you guys would like to leave me a review so you can offset the review I got from this idiot, uh, do it on Amazon or uh, Apple Podcasts. And uh, you can also leave me some stars on Spotify as well. Um, you can't write a review from my understanding, but you can give me some stars if you'd like. I, um, I recommend at least two or three. That would be helpful. And uh, lastly, I'm going to publish some phone calls from some uh, from some. Uh, regulars such as Hannah and and Michael and uh, heard from Smokey, which is nice to hear from Smokey, who sounds very smoked out per usual, and uh, and Becca from Texas as well. Shout out to Becca for uh, haven't heard from her in a while. She called in as well. If you guys want to call the show six four six four five zero twenty twelve. If you want to support the show, please go to weirdafnews.com, dot com, the official website, and you can click on uh, buying Jonesy a coffee, or you can join the Patreon right from the homepage by clicking on the banner. Pretty easy. I appreciate all your support, and I appreciate your time. We'll see you tomorrow, guys. Hello, Jonesy. This is Hannah from Chicago. I just wanted to comment on the story about the drag queens telling children that there are 73 genders. Um, as you said, the number that the drag queen gave is inconsistent with the one that you found on the internet. There are 94 genders. So the drag queen was wrong. But also, yeah, I think that drag queens are supposed to pay attention to the way that these lessons are taught. I mean, they need to find an inappropriate way to talk about types of sex, parts of the body, like how to speak up if you feel uncomfortable during sex. I think there is a way to talk about sex, you know, with children, like an appropriate way to do it, you know, so that they don't feel uncomfortable, you know, uh, so they, that they feel like they're learning something, they can ask questions. Um, yeah. And then it was, and then you said, the teachers were also being forced to talk about certain topics. I think that, you know, they should have the right to decide what to talk about 
and what not to talk about in their classrooms because it's their classroom, it's their curriculum, and they should be able to teach it however they want to. Oh, good luck with your life, ma'am. Hey, Jonesy, this is Becca in New Braunfels, Texas. Uh, I know you've been getting a lot of crazy weather where you're at. I hope you're staying warm and that uh, it's not too bad for you all. Uh, the, the weather on the news makes it sound like it's really kind of crazy in Los Angeles and around you. Uh, just stay warm and be careful. Bye-bye. Hey, Jonesy, it's Smokey Coin. On yesterday's podcast, man, you had someone who, like, in your viewer mail section, they wrote you a message. It was, like, more like a love poem, and they said something about you kick ass when you smoke grass, and you like that really a lot, but you miss the opportunity to do, like, a weird AF News and Jonesy disclaimer that uh, in no way does Weird AF News or Jonesy, like, condone the use of drugs for, like, especially for young people. You know, like, uh, Weird AF News and Jonesy do not condone the use of drugs. And I think you really missed that opportunity, man. So I just wanted to kind of point that out to you. So anyway, I just wanted to tell you that. So moving beyond that, you know, when I was listening to yesterday's show, I was totally wasted because I find that that enhances my listening pleasure. And so when I was listening to the show, I was thinking about all the bad weather that you've been having out there lately, man, like all the snow and all the rain. And it got me to thinking about an old song from the 1970s by Albert Hammond. And you know who Albert Hammond is, man? I mean, he's like this incredible one-hit wonder, but he went on after his really short musical career, but he wrote songs for, like, Tina Turner and Celine Dion and uh, people like Whitney Houston, and he's, like, responsible for, like, uh, 300 and, and... $60 $60 million worth of song hits, man. It's like incredibly rich himself. He's like this super writer, man. But anyway, let's see if you know his song. He sang this called, It never rains in California, but girls, don't they warn ya? It pours, man, it pours. Hey, Julie, now do you remember that song? I mean, it was really something, man. It was like one hit wonder in the 70s, but I just thought I'd point that out, sing a little bit of his story and see if you remember it. And I've been thinking of all the rain you've had, and I've really been thinking, I hope Jonesy's safe out there, and that, like, you're, like, in good shape, because I worry about you, man. Think about you all the time. Okay, you take care. Peace, man. Hey, Jonesy, it's Michael calling from Iowa City about... Friday's podcast of the uh, mother of a seven-year-old, and the mother is an OnlyFans performer, and her seven-year-old son is suspended from school because she is a performer on OnlyFans, and she's also banned from any school functions. So it's totally wrong that the child is being suspended from school. He's a complete innocent in all of this. Now, if they ban the mother from school functions, that's something else that could be debated. You know, if she were to go to the school and kids at the school were aware of her uh, and what she's doing on OnlyFans, that could be a distraction. And there could be a debate about what she's doing, being respectable or not. That's a totally separate discussion that, you know, I won't get into here, but um, as far as the young child, he's an innocent in all of this. So whether the mother is, you know, um, uh, interior designer 
or a secretary or a prostitute or a stripper or a performer on OnlyFans, the child is totally innocent in all of this, and there's no way he should be suspended. But if he is seven years old at an elementary school, then most elementary schools go up to only fifth or sixth grade, and that means the oldest kid at that school shouldn't be any more than 12 years old. And as such, a 12-year-old shouldn't know anything or have any access to her on the Internet and know that, you know, there is a seven-year-old kid or any kid at the school whose mom is an OnlyFans performer. So if you've got one of those other kids, a uh, fifth or sixth grader or something like that, who's finding out about that by looking themselves on the Internet, that's totally inappropriate and that should be dealt with. If they're finding out from their parent, then that's wrong. That should be dealt with, and the parent should be talking about that with their sixth grade kid. And if they're finding out from an older sibling, well, then the parents ought to be dealing with that. So, you know, this is a touchy subject, but there's no way the seven-year-old kid should be suspended. And if these other things are happening, uh, like the grade school kids are finding out from adults or older siblings, then that's something that shouldn't be happening and that should be dealt with. Anyway, that's my opinion on that. And then I would say good luck with your life, man.